Should the government have the power to pry into the very private conversations of the counseling room, to treat certain topics as off-limits, and to threaten those who discuss off-limit topics with crushing fines? What a ridiculous question, right? Why should some governor or mayor or bureaucrat have any power to dictate the content of conversations between an adult patient and the trusted counselor of their choice? Can you imagine a more flagrant violation of free expression, of infringing on your fundamental right to speak, to inquire, to seek truth? No. But New York City officials passed a law that blocked people in New York from seeking out professional counselors to help them move away from unwanted same-sex attraction. How did the city enforce this law? by levying fines on therapists who offered this type of counseling. We're not talking about a parking ticket fine. No, New York City threatened fines of up to $10,000. The law also blocked New Yorkers struggling with gender identity disorder from seeking professional counselors who could help them achieve more comfort with their biological sex, but not the other way around. So a counselor who helped a man who feels like a woman but wants to live as a man could be fined $10,000. But a counselor who helped a man live as a woman, that's totally different according to the city of New York. One counselor, Dr. Dovid Schwartz, challenged New York City's brazen overreach. Dr. Schwartz, an Orthodox Jew himself, works almost exclusively with Orthodox Jewish patients. In that community, traditional marriage, children, and family are high priorities. Indeed, God ordained priorities. Some of Dr. Schwartz's clients are men who are sexually attracted to other men, but because of their religious beliefs and their personal life goals, want to experience opposite sex attraction so they can marry, form a natural family, and live consistently with their faith. And some of Dr. Schwartz's patients have achieved those goals. He simply listens and talks to them, giving them emotional support and advice. That's it. Dr. Schwartz and his patients engage in private conversations about very private and complex issues. His patients are adults who seek him out, and they are always free to disagree and walk away. Yet, the New York City Council believed it could insert itself into these types of private conversations. Dr. Schwartz and Alliance Defending Freedom disagreed. As ADF Senior Counsel Roger Brooks said, all New Yorkers and all Americans deserve the right to private conversations free from government control. New York's attempt to regulate and censor private discussions between adults and their counselors violated freedom of speech, a core right that the First Amendment protects. The city eventually backed down and repealed the law, but only after Dr. Schwartz's team of ADF attorneys went toe-to-toe with the city council in court. The troubling thing about this one isolated case of a city's flagrant intrusion into the personal conversations of its residents is that it isn't isolated at all. The really troubling thing about what New York City did is that it's just the tip of the iceberg of how some government officials are subverting our basic American rights. They have forgotten something the U.S. Supreme Court has repeatedly said. The people lose when the government is the one dictating which ideas should prevail. In a free society, the people decide what ideas are worthy of discussion, not the government.